Welcome back. Cindy Dole here. This is Home Wizards, where we're all about home and life improvement. Here to help you along the way. And if you're twisting by the pool, you just hope that it looks good in there. I'm a pool girl. Grew up with one, of course, and uh, always worked with my dad to clean the pool with the pumice stones, you know. And then what that was my chore to vacuum the pool. And then we move into a house, and we find out years after having moved in, it looked like a beautiful blue pool. But they had painted over black algae. Not happy campers. It turned out, you know, those blooms were all over the place, and the only solution was to basically blast it and start from scratch. But how do you diagnose some really icky, annoying pool problems, and how do you avoid them? Well, with me is a licensed pool contractor for 20 years plus, uh, all about maintaining a gorgeous pool. Uh, Larry, uh, Zuck, it's great to have you here. Zolk, I'm sorry, with Spectrum Pool Care. Great to have you, Larry. Hi, Cindy. Good to be here. So you love pools, don't you? I love pools. I grew up with pools, swam in pools as a child, and... So I'm stuck with pools. They're yeah. beautiful. Yeah. But we don't love them when they don't have what you call the three C's. And what are the three C's? Uh, the three C's for me would be cleaning, chemistry, and circulation. Uh, what you need to make sure is that your water is clear and sanitized, and that's going to require good water chemistry. You need to know what you're doing there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you need to clean your pool, like you mentioned, a vacuum and a net and a brush. you got to do that uh, regularly every week. And then the other thing is circulation. You need to be sure that your skimmer basket, your pump basket, the filtration is clear and clean. And all that's a balancing act. When that's all together, you have a wonderful looking So what if you go on vacation and something like the pump breaks down, right? Well. (laughs) (laughs) You're out of luck. You are. It's going to really cause a whole hornet's nest of problems. I'll never forget my dad who always, and I think to this day, it's still that same chemistry kit of little baby bottles. There's a red one and a yellow one and a, you know, it's It's the same thing, right? Uh, Oh, yeah. What, what are in those bottles? Uh, it's basically a chemical. It's a, a color tri- titration, uh-huh. and it's just a very easy way for us because we're very visual. Uh-huh. And you try to get it within a range, a color range. And it's it's a balancing act. So you want to get within that range of, let's say, pH or chlorine. And you put it in this little plastic container to see how the water yeah. looks in that yeah. little container. And you yeah. drop the drops yeah, in yeah. there, and you want to make sure you're within that color that's It's uh, still acceptable. old school. It's the same old school oh, thing. absolutely. Really, old school is still the same. <laughs> you know, nothing much has changed. Well, we're going to get through all the problems, and, and the big one is algae, right? Yeah. Green, blue, black, whatever it is. And uh, joining us is Eric, who's calling in from Northridge. Eric, we hear you have a problem with your pool. The three C's are definitely not uh, happening in my pool. I've got one C, <laughs> and that is, please, uh, please stop. I can't take it. The algae's growing. It's gone up on the side of the uh, pool. I was out of town for a while. The pool shut down, uh, and I've been using the stainless scrub brush. I've been doing the shock. I've even tried an algicide, and I've vacuumed everything, but it just seems like the staining is still there, and I don't know what to do, and I... Uh, every time I look at my kids jumping in, I want to strangle them because it feels like they're just adding to the problem with, you know, with just usage. So what do I do? How do I deal with that? Uh, basically, if you're trying to kill algae, uh, that's an organic material, and you're using a sanitizer, super shocking, or an algicide, and you're trying to eradicate that. That's different than a staining that's a mineral stain. So if that's actually living organism on the walls, you can kill it. But one thing you need to look at is the hardness of the water that you're starting with. If you have very hard water, that's going to be very difficult to remove, and that discoloration can stick to the walls. Uh, I would test your hardness. Have you done that yet? Yeah, you know, I have. I've done, I've done a lot of the testing, and apparently the water checks out fine. Okay. So now it just feels like, you know, it's remnants from the staining. So, uh, you know, is, is it a time thing? Like, if I keep repeating these processes, it'll end up, eradicating itself and what kind of filter do you have well you know i have a traditional filter with the you know the baffles and the the diatomaceous earth Mm -hmm. and stuff and i've cleaned that out once and changed it and i and i assume i have to do that again after i suck all the rest of the dead algae up off the bottom right i start over with that uh if you brush take a brush to the walls do you see a plume of algae you see any of that green start to come off the walls at all it does come off, but then it just feels like it's removing it layer by layer. Okay. You know? uh, now, it's sort of an art uh, a bit. You have to get your pH first in a good range. you got to make sure that that's in an acceptable range, about 7.2, 7.4. Uh, that's going to make the chlorine that you add to the water very powerful and very strong to be effective. Uh, so okay. once you do that, super shock the pool. Uh, you got to get it up about 10 times higher than you normally would, have nobody swimming there. Um, run the system for about three days with a clean filter. 
And what about using the backwash hose? Is that... Basically, you want to uh, clean your filter uh-huh. uh, after you super shock the pool. Backwashing is just a temporary measure. That's all that is. It just reverses the... So, so, so now, now super shocking, is that different? You know, like I'm just going to a local pool manufacturer that has their own shock that they, that what they call. Is, is there something more that I could use than, than the traditional super shock that they sell in the package or... Yeah, super, super shock is just a general term. You're basically elevating the chlorine levels, and you can use liquid chlorine, dry chlorine. I use a combination. I used, I like to use about half liquid and half dry. Liquid's okay. very fast acting. The dry is a little bit delayed. And what here's here's my approach. I make sure the pH is balanced really well. Once okay. I get that balanced, I brush the walls. Then I've got the algae exposed. It's floating in the water. It's vulnerable. You have to get it off the walls or it won't be killed because it sticks to the walls and it's protecting itself. It doesn't want to die. You get, <laughs> really. It's it's a living organism. Sure. It, it's got millions of years. It's evil is what it is. You know, yeah. <laughs> so you, know, you get it exposed. You get it floating in the water. That's how you kill it. And then when I say super shock, I mean maybe 10 uh, ten. Bags of shock, dry shock, and 10 gallons of chlorine, it may take that. It depends on the size of your pool. That's for a, a decently... 38,000 gallons. That's a big pool. You're going to need a lot of chlorine. So I'd even go up to maybe 12 gallons and 12 bags of shock. But again... But don't your... swim in it then for... Oh, absolutely not. You can't swim in that pool for a good five to seven days after that. Okay, and then, and then after... So brush it, vacuum, clean the filter, do the super-duper shock. And then if I want hairless children, then go ahead and let them swim. Otherwise, wait a little bit. <laughs> but wait, shouldn't yeah. we wait to vacuum? I heard you're supposed to not vacuum until after the shock. Right. Here's here's the key is uh, you want to kill that algae. And uh, before you get that, you don't want living algae vacuumed into the filter. Uh-huh. If you have algae in the filter, it will keep alive. It, it'll keep filtering. It's like a sponge. It's like hanging out. It's going to feed your pool living algae. And it's just a... Uh, that's something so that's people the miss. Thing. Oh, so, yeah. you, so step one is to maybe, you know, with a net, if there's any debris in the bottom, then brush, then the shock, and then after the water is, is not green anymore, then you vacuum? I mean, should you wait Cindy, till... Cindy, you've got it. No, that, that's perfect. Okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that, that, you, you explained it better than I did. Basically, you want it not green. That could be clear. It could be white. But you want it not green, then you clean the okay, filter. Okay, Eric, you have your homework. Okay, great. I, I understand. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Thanks. I gotta get I gotta get twelve gallons of chlorine. We'll, we'll see we'll see it at the, the pool supply store. <laughs> you'll, you'll see me at the hospital after I have horrible chlorine. Oh burn. gosh. <laughs> Don't All go right. swimming Good for luck. a week. I, now, do you care? I mean, you mentioned about the, the chlorine coming in different ways. I mean, it's in tablets and packets. and I mean, it doesn't right. really matter. No, it actually does. It a does. Bit. Yeah. You like the liquid best. No, as I said, it, it is a bit of an art. It's a bit uh, of an art. Yeah. Because it is. A, it's a science. I mean, it's chemistry. It is chemistry. Sakes. And in each type of chlorine has You're its a own property. You're a pool doctor is what you are. We are. We wear <laughs> many hats. You know, and, and what we do is we use liquid chlorine in combination with chlorine tablets throughout the week. Liquid, liquid is a very high pH, fast acting, which is great. The tablets are slow dissolving, low pH. You put them together, you've got a nice balanced pool. You still have to test though, at least once a week. Okay, all right. Well, luckily that hasn't happened to our pool lately. But boy, okay. that black, the black algae yeah. that was a whole nother problem because I mean, it was. I mean, you talk about it wanting to get into the filter and not leaving because it's like it's like trying to survive. Those yeah. blooms were into the plaster, and yeah. we had to completely pulverize that uh, the surface. And then we went with Pebble Tech, and I don't know if if, the, if certain surfaces are better than others in terms of being less prone to algae. But we seem True. to be pretty lucky. Yeah, you think yeah, so? No, absolutely. Really, what algae wants to do is stick to a very porous surface, uh-huh. especially black algae. It'll get in there and get roots into a porous surface. If you have a brand a brand new plaster, let's just say. Doesn't have to be pebble. Let's say plaster finish brand. It's nice and hard and smooth. Black algae is going to have a very hard time getting in there. Very difficult time. If you have black algae, it's really a sign, typically, that your hardness is maybe high, too high. You need to check your hardness. Your pH is high, mm-hmm. and then it tends, to, and you have a rough surface. So that's where black algae tends to. It's it's a sign that something's out of balance. But you can treat it. You can treat it with a silver algaecide. You can treat it with a granular. Okay. So there's ways to deal with it. All right. Uh, and what about stains on the pool surface? A uh, surface. Um, does this algae typically stain your pool, and, and then you yeah. feel like you've, you've ruined your pool? Yeah. Um, 
you know, you'll see many different colors on a pool wall. And again, if it's living and sitting on there living, you're going to kill it and remove it. If it's embedded in a plaster, and that can happen. If you have hard water and algae's been on there a long time, it will have like a... It's a like cal- a sealant, isn't it? It's like it? a calcium incrustation, and it's basically sealed on there. Uh-huh. You can drain the pool and do an acid wash. And I tell clients, you know, expect a 40% improvement because you might get 20, you might get 80%. You know, you want to kind of gauge it a little low and be surprised, but... You know, uh, staining is going to occur. I remember we got yeah. growing up, we had to have the the pool drained. Yeah. We did the acid wash, and it was so much fun as a kid to, to walk into the deep end when the pool's empty. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, it just kind of feels like you're in this big cave. Oh yeah. And then it seemed to do the trick, but I know it, I had friends where it, it would come back again. You know, so it is. It's a science. You have to kind of balance it and see what's what's going to work for you. Yeah, the, the balancing act is important. It, you know, the way you do your water chemistry, which is really that, as you said, that has not changed. Mm-hmm. If you're faithful to keep your water within a test kit's parameters, pH, chlorine, alkalinity, test your hardness once a year, you're going to be pretty safe. Okay. Very well, important. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, uh, we're talking with Larry Zulk about all things pool. Uh, what are some other must-haves in your arsenal to keep that pool looking crystal clear and clean? And we don't want any of that algae stuff. No, sir, on this hot day especially. Home Wizards, Cindy Dole, maybe you have a pool question. You can call on in at 888-539-2980, 888-539-2980. This is KFWB. Home Wizards, we're back after this. 